Hi, my love. It's Jeraine Malay, to go from around the way, where we have culture, conversation, and community. And in today's video, I'm coming to you all with some quick commentary on uh, Chris Rock's new Netflix special, um, Selective Outrage. Uh, this was the first live event that Netflix has ever had, comedy special. And of course, it went to none other than Chris Rock. You know, he's all had an interesting year. So I felt like this was good marketing. This was good marketing. Um, before we hop into the commentary, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It's really, really helping me on the YouTube algorithm. And y'all, I'm trying to hit that 10K, okay, <laughs> period. So let's just hop right into it. Chris looks good. I mean, like, I want to just start off by saying that I'm not a huge Chris Rock fan, although I am a huge comedy fan. Um, put it to you like this, one of my favorite comedians um it's paul mooney <laughs> just so you can get the you know the context so let's just hop right into it um i'm just gonna go through this as just some talking points um one of the things that stood out to me was he mentioned uh you know january 6th the insurrection he's like did you see the monkeys on the capitol which i really like because you know what? people always like to refer to us as monkeys and gorillas and if i ain't seen no apes that's definitely some apes that happened on January 6th. If you seen them buffoons and macaroons that was out there doing all of that stuff, I mean, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, there were some instances of, you know, that self-hatred, that colorism that was just eking out of his, um, you know, material when we talked about um, Meghan Markle now. I agree with a lot of what he said. He's like, you know, she's on Oprah talking about, I, I didn't know they were so racist, but they are like original racists. Like, you know, they are colonizers, the original colonizers. How could you not know? Um, you know, he mentioned something about her hitting the light skin lottery. That was hilarious. Um, but then he mentions like Draymond Green. He was like, you know, black people, we always want to know like what our babies look like. And we can tell, oh, yeah, his ears is dark. Her ears are dark. She's going to look like this or she's going to look like that. That's very true within the black community, y'all. Come on, be for real. But, um, you know, he was just like, she was just dealing with some regular in-law stuff. That's what black people When it do. came to, you know, the differences, he's like, oh, is this going to be a Steph Curry baby or a Draymond Green baby? You know, and, you know, Draymond Green baby is going to come out dark and greasy and, oh, wear a bell. I told you to wear a bell. And, like, those, you know, you're too dark and you're, you know, midnight blue and black and greasy and this, that, and the third. And, um, why? <laughs> why are we still making those jokes in 2023 in this climate? Um, I didn't think it was funny. I actually was just like, because mm, does Draymond does Draymond Green actually have kids? And this is why all of our athletes and rappers go ahead and run to get with a non-black woman because they are afraid to have kids that look like themselves. And Chris Rock really just kind of, <laughs> you know, put that out on Front Street. Um, even like with himself, he mentions, you know, the Kardashians, which I feel like, you know, I didn't necessarily like the Robert Kardashian joke because he's not here. Like, why speak on the dead? But I, I will say that I did laugh during that segment talking about Kris Jenner is, is like a black a black grandma. She except the crackhead basketball player, the bipolar rapper. Like, get on in here. You know, the dad got the titties now. It was a little funny. Um, He really kind of... Um, I want to say he was jumping all over the place, but it, it, it was a woven type of dance. I really feel like he understood the, all the eyes were on him. He filmed it in Baltimore, which, you know, shout out to Baltimore. We over here in the Northeast winning. But, you know, he had those nice, you know, very stereotypical black jokes, you know, in, in word jokes and these pants say in word. And, you know, the, I feel like Chris Rock does a lot of like race baiting and banter. And when I say that, I'm saying it to, and I'm saying it, judging it off of like Dave Chappelle's race banter. I feel like Dave comes from a place of education and like trying to force people to think about things in a different way. Whereas Chris Brock, mm, I get the idea that he just enjoys um, hearing white people laugh to his inward jokes. 
anyway moving right along he did talk about you know the trans community some he handled it in a way that i feel like a lot of comedians just um you know really would not have um and that's no shade to dave i, I really do i did enjoy dave's special but he mentions you know that the ukraine is doing better than america because they are together they are united they got it you know they got it going on and what he failed to mention is you know ukraine's population is largely european you know like yeah they're 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 coming together as white people up against other white people so what's what's the big deal there he mentioned his kids and how they're spoiled and you know he got her kicked out of school and you know that whole life lesson of you know my my daughter's in school in paris to go you know for culinary and she's you know really really great and she's really privileged and i'm so blessed in the life that i you know that i have been able to afford her and i appreciate that type of introspection because a lot of people um don't really understand you know once they're in it but i feel like he still is tuned into the fact that yeah i'm from the pole <laughs> i'm from the pole in new york and i understand and appreciate the gift that i have and don't feel sorry for me although this very very embarrassing thing happened to me listen i live a great life and so does my kids um all throughout he mentioned i don't need another rapper mad at me so you know that we'll, we'll get to that he mentioned something about his kids being super privileged and you know you can't mess with those rock girls which we like to see he's like my daughter's wearing afro puffs and she's and she's fencing i think we need to have more images like that i think we need to have more conversations and i think that those are the black girls that need to be elevated not for not only just for inspiration reasons but because representation matters people think that we are unable to do certain things and it's really just we don't have the access so i like that he highlights the fact that he gives his daughters access to these type of things he mentions like you know he mentions his mom his mom travels to paris twice a year to visit his daughter but she mentions that you know my mom was born in 1940 and um, if you if you were have if you were having dental issues that you cannot go see a white dentist if though none of the black dentists were available or you had none in that area this was in South Carolina you would have to go to a vet I did not know that I know a lot of people who watched it did not know that I like that he dropped some history some knowledge on us a little bit because that's unbelievable in America not too long ago black people in South Carolina would have to go get their teeth pulled out by a vet how dehumanizing how unbelievable is that child America the great so he segues that into um, women's beauty somehow he mentions you know how Beyonce is so beautiful that even she could work at Beyonce and still pull Jay-Z you know and I when he mentioned Beyonce I was just giving a side eye like uh, be a tread lightly <laughs> tread lightly not too much on Beyonce not too fucking much um anyway he talks about you know I'm not you know saying you know being disrespectful to Jay-Z because he knows Beyonce is beautiful we all know that Beyonce is beautiful like be for real and I, again I don't need that mad rapper at me but you know he then he starts talking about will and this is really what we want to talk about he says that everybody called you know will a bit okay and will practices selective outrage he said drink champs called him a bitch Charlie the view me. breakfast club <laughs> people on youtube everybody called him a b because his wife was messing around with um, one of her son's friends, which is unbelievable. We all seen it. We all seen the jokes. We all seen the conversations and the memes. He mentions the fact that Will Smith is significantly bigger than him. He goes like, I know you can't tell on TV, but you know, he, he trained and played Muhammad Ali. Okay. You know, he played football players and this and that, and he played Pookie, which I do think that when the slap happened, I felt like Chris wasn't that much smaller than Will granted you know he's obviously slimmer but you know just because you're slim don't mean that you're that much smaller but he's saying that he's way bigger than i am and he said he kind of gave us a, you know the um inside scoop of why he felt like the issue with jada started and he was like because years ago he had made a movie called concussion and he was not nominated and he kind of messed up the joke i feel like the nerves were getting the best of him maybe not even nerves but he really wanted to drive this point home he says that he had the movie concussion he said that the movie wasn't that great it wasn't nominated and he wanted he wanted me to 
or she wanted me, not even him, she wanted me to boycott the Oscars that year, but he said he had to provide for his family, and he decided to do it anyway. The movie wasn't even that great, and then, um, you know, he said, and now I just watch Emancipation to watch him get whooped, right? Cute. He said, I loved Will Smith. He was a part of my, you know, you know, whatever the case. I loved him. I just looked up to him. All his movies were great. And everybody keeps asking why I didn't hit him back, why I didn't punch him back, why I did not respond. He's going to say, because my parents raised me. My parents raised me. They raised me to not fight in front of white people. And with that, he dropped the mic. That, to me, felt like a line written by Dave Chappelle. It did. And I just wanted to point back to earlier in his in monologue and, and comedy thing, whatever, you know, he, you know, your parents told you, taught you not to fight in front of white people, which I do understand and agree. We all felt like there was a level of on cold that we should be that Will really didn't care about at that moment. But you said, Inga, Inga, all throughout your thing, you know, white people were in there cracking up so much. So it kind of made me uncomfortable. Um, you know, Chris has a, a history of punching down on black women. I see how he was able to make that moment about staying on code. But in retrospect, what he said was not that harsh. I think that there was a buildup and I do think that there was selective outrage. Honestly, it highlights how much of a I hate to say coward, because if you ever read Will Smith's autobiography, damn, that was good. Um, you know that he struggled with that in his life. And he chose that moment to kind of be upset when his wife had him on camera talking about an entanglement with his son's friend. I think that all in all, Chris Rock ate him. He ate him the fuck up with that. He ate him up with that. He ate him up and he ate him down. I'm trying to make it make sense because naturally I like Will Smith. Come on now, be fucking for real. But Chris Rock ate. He ate with that I don't fight in front of white people thing because y'all were in the room at the Oscars. You could have handled it differently. He could have not said that joke. True, we get it. But of all the people that said something about your wife, when you phrase it, when you frame it like that, when you frame it like that, yeah, Chris has a 100% valid point. I'm curious to know what you all think. Um, there were some moments of cringe. There were some moments of self-hatred. There were some moments of colorism showing through. Misogyny, all of those things, especially when we talk about the abortion area of it. I didn't even talk about that because, girl. But I, I want to know if you guys are interested in watching it. If you do, drop down. Let me know what you feel about that. I feel like when it all went down, I was definitely siding with Will. In this moment, mm, I feel like Chris, he won. He won. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like the video and subscribe if you like this type of commentary. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.